Whether you're looking to relocate, have fun, or expand your horizon, learning a new language can actually open the door. Not only this, but we've heard of many more benefits that learning a new language brings. In fact, we most probably have started learning the language or studying in the language, but it doesn't seem like we're making any progress. Wait! In this video, I'll walk you through every aspect there is to learning a new language, using applications, and even how to study effectively in this new language. Hello friends, welcome back to the channel. Happy New Year. If you're new year, I'm Samo, a third year medical student currently studying in Russia. And on Fizz Control, we talk about how to be more productive, how to study more effectively, and generally my life as a medical student here in Russia. And if you love to see more videos or more content on these topics or more short videos on these topics, do well to subscribe to this channel and turn on the bell notification so you don't miss out on any video as you drop every single week on this channel. According to Busu blog, I hope I'm pronouncing it correctly, about 6,500 languages are spoken in the world today. Some of these languages are widely spoken more than others. Some of the most widely spoken languages are English, Mandarin, Spanish, Hindi, French, and so on. As much as there are reasons why people um, study new languages, studying a new language has actually been one of the biggest reasons why people try not to relocate or study abroad. And I personally can actually remember when I applied to the scholarship board for this scholarship to study in Russia and I didn't hear anything from the board for about two months and I thought I wasn't picked because other people were saying they got messages and all. And I I didn't want to just feel bad I failed um, the scholarship exam or whatever. I decided to find myself reasons why the scholarship is a bad idea. That probably um, they are going to be studying in a different language, studying medicine in a different language. You can't even understand. It's probably impossible to speak to people in Russia. You, in Russian language, I've even seen it. Like it's not possible to learn. But immediately after two months, I got a message from the scholarship board. But immediately after two months, when I got the message from the scholarship board, I don't know where all those reasons vanished to. I then began to feel like this was the best decision of my life. I can fully talk about this topic because I've been studying abroad for more than three years or close to four years now and I've been studying a new language, studying with foreigners and I've not actually been failing and so that means it's actually possible and I'll actually walk you through how you can study a new language if you're just studying for any hour or how you can study a new language if you're studying to actually uh, use it in school and I'll also walk you through the mistakes I and my friends made while we were actually studying this language when we first arrived here and at the end of the video I'll walk you through how I personally study in a foreign language. For every language, um, according to my knowledge, I personally divided every single language into two main aspects and these two main aspects are different sub aspects so every language you pick today you can divide it into the official part of the language and the day-to-day -day conversational part of the language it's important to actually know this because most of the things you learn from school textbooks um, from online platform applications duolingo and all of that might probably be the official part of the language which is very very different from what people speak day to day. When I was in my first year in my um, in my preparatory faculty studying the language, I studied language to a very good extent. I could hear my teachers speaking when they're teaching us like science courses, medicine and everything. But immediately I got added to my Russian group um, with my Russian classmates, I got totally lost and I couldn't even understand some greetings and all of that because the day-to-day -day conversational language is actually very different from the official language and you might probably understand this as the pidgin of their language. Under these two main aspects of every language, there are different subparts too and one of those is actually the memory aspect which deals with you remembering words, the meaning of these words, remembering grammatical laws and how to combine the grammatical laws. Then apart from the memory aspect, we have the speaking aspect and this speaking part actually deals with what you say in what situation, who to say what to, like um, using a particular pronoun for someone, somebody elderly or formal or informal. And after the speaking aspect, there's also the written aspect or the writing aspect. And this aspect deals with um, how you write each alphabet. Probably when it comes to the conversational part, this also means like the short form of every word. One of the problems I had was that I was speaking English correctly or perfectly because that was what we speak in Nigeria. And then when getting to on getting to Russia, you feel like for you to speak Russian language, when you speak Russian language, you'd want to speak it perfectly. Or probably it's just the mentality I had as maybe a student or something that you want it to be perfect. And that made me shy in speaking. So I was very good with the grammatical laws, good with remembering the meaning of words. But then when I'm about to speak, to use the correct conjugation of a verb, to use words with words, it actually became a problem for me. And because of that, 
I was shy to speak. And what actually compiled the problem was that in my school, or probably a lot of medical schools in Russia, there are two parts to the exams. So you first, you get your question and then you write down, and then eventually you go to answer orally to the teacher. And so at that point in time, you eventually still have to speak to the teacher or speak. And I felt like if I was making mistakes in my grammatical construction of the language, that I wasn't speaking right. But that was actually a mistake and a problem because these people eventually will understand you. And also I made a mistake by not really socializing with Russians or Africans that don't speak English, that don't speak my language. So I wasn't really practicing my, lang my Russian language very well until like um, towards the middle of my first year that I started changing my ways towards these mistakes and now I'm very comfortable with the language. Now let me put this out there very quickly. Using apps like Duolingo can be very effective in getting you into the atmosphere of the language as a form of introduction. But trust me, you could be a master of the language, be a master of the language in the app and you try to speak to a Russian and you don't probably understand what they are saying because the app might be teaching you the official aspect of the language and when you are speaking somebody might be using the conversational part and even though you might understand some part you won't be as fluent as you'd expect yourself to be when probably when you're practicing in the app it's good sometimes to use the app probably when you are not in that country you can use the app to start learning the language as an introduction but the app shouldn't be the hundred percent of your form of learning because it's important to actually hear the um the speaker speak to you um or probably chat with you that way you'd actually have a first hand base um a first hand learning of the language from the speaker now back to which method actually helps you learn which part of the language or let me just talk about what methods actually help you learn a language efficiently very very fast and the first method is to leave your comfort zone and start speaking the language immediately yeah this might be very hard for you perhaps you live in a country where people don't speak the language you're learning perhaps you're in nigeria and you're learning the russian language or you're in any country all over the world yes that may be a problem but there is the internet there for you and that is why you can connect with people all over the world connect with anyone that speaks the language but trust me being fluent in the language chatting or speaking the language actually starts with you trying to talk or trying to speak the language not 100% learning. Yes, it's important to learn, but it's important to, as much as you're learning, put in practice what you're learning because this is a language and your brain has to be accustomed to you speaking the language. And so it's important for you to um, cram the words, but you can't be fluent by just cramming the words or learning grammatical laws or learning how to speak. You can only be fluent by you speaking yet again and again and again and again. And it might be funny sometimes, you'd have to actually speak with your mistake, speak with your wrong pronunciation and all of that. Yeah, but some people will actually make just of you. Probably a few or less than few self will make just of you. But a lot of people will correct you in love and would actually love to help in your journey of learning the language because it's interesting people would see that you're trying to learn their language and they love to teach you the second step to actually learning a language very fast and efficiently is to start listening i think there's something they used to say musicians or people that play keyboard that your ear has to be tuned to the keyboard or something like that yeah this act actually also applies to learning a new language. If you're trying to learn a new language, it's important for you to start listening to it as fast as possible. You might not even understand anything they're saying, but try to start listening to the language. When I was in my first year in my preparatory faculty, the teachers knew that every single person in the class, like 30 students in the class, don't know anything about the language. So when they're speaking to it, they try to speak extremely slowly. They try to speak to each person to make sure each person understands. And that is how they are meant to do it because they are trying to teach us the language. But once you leave the preparatory class and you move into the first year, you are probably going to be eight foreigners and oh, like 22 Russians. And so the teachers don't care. They are coming here to teach you medicine. They are coming here to teach you whatever course it is. So they are not, they are, they are not caring whether you know the language or not. They believe you've studied it. So they are going to speak very fast. And that might be a problem at first. Or it might not even be a problem if you've listened enough and your ears are not tuned and you can now even understand easily. Talking about the memory aspect, I think we shouldn't bother ourselves a lot about the memory aspect because you can decide to cram the old dictionary. Yeah, you'll be good, but I don't think that's actually the best approach to learning a language. It's important for you to actually just speak and listen. 
over time some words will stick or not even some a lot of words would stick to your head and you'd get to understand the meaning of some words just by speaking so i think you should put this memory aspect or you remembering words in the secondary position and listening and speaking should be in the primary position that way if you have spoken a lot or like listened a lot to people speaking eventually you remember some words and the memory aspect will get itself taken care of now to the final part of this video how i actually study in the russian language i study medicine and as a matter of fact it might be hard or because we, are, we have to read a lot of things in russian language and so how do i study at first when i first came in my preparatory faculty when we we're doing physics chemistry biology i had to be using translator like to translate every single sentence because then i didn't understand anything but now that you are much more comfortable with the language my personal approach to studying is that sometimes i try to watch videos um in english like on the topic perhaps it's pharmacology or histology i try to watch videos in these topics in english and i kind of have the understanding or sometimes i go the extra mile to even study like a standard english textbook just to have the understanding and then when i come to study in russian language it's actually the same thing but probably different um names or russians actually love their scientists and they want to put the names of their scientists and everything so that is just where it now comes in and you now have to like and also you need to know the scientific grammar in the textbook so that you can answer in class because you might know some words like okay hello or something like that but for you to know the meaning of um the meaning of it two more you have to actually study the textbook in russian language so i i personally just try to first probably study in english and sometimes sometimes actually be, due to the difficulty probably difficulty of the words of the teacher in the textbook i can just study straight in russian and you have the understanding and eventually you can later in life study in english just to have the english understanding also in your head so that's been it if you've not watched this video you can click on this video to watch and this video also you can click on this video to watch and um that's been it thank you very much for watching and catch you very soon in the next one peace